What's going on everybody? Low Tech back here with another tutorial video. Today we're looking at how to install Laka on your Switch. So real quick, if you don't know what Laka is, Laka is a lightweight Linux distribution that uses RetroArch as its front end. So essentially you will be loading into an operating system that is RetroArch. And that is basically the sole function of the console that you have this installed on. So we'll be putting it on an SD card, just like anything else that you install on the Switch through the SD card. It can just be another OS that you'll have access to. So with that being said, a couple of things you're going to need before you can do this. You're going to need an unpatched original Switch. You're going to need a minimum 8 gigabyte SD card, but I highly recommend something way bigger than that, like 64 to 128, so you can fit the games that you want on your card. And then you're also going to need a way to send your payload. So whether that is just a USB type A to type C cable and software on your computer to send a payload or an RCM loader, which is a little device that you can use. Either way will work. It doesn't make a difference. Whatever method you prefer will be fine. I'm going to be doing the RCM loader method. And you will also need a jig so that you can put your switch in RCM mode. Once you have all your supplies, you're going to want to format your SD card to FAT32 before proceeding with the rest of this guide. Before we get started, real quick, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you enjoy the channel and my other videos, please hit that subscribe button to keep these videos rolling in. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's get into installing Laka on your Switch. First thing you want to do is going to go to the GitHub page. Links will be in the description for both of the websites you need to go to to get these download. So once you're on this page, you're going to want to click the download here button. All right, you're going to want to go with this one in the middle. That's the latest build. You're going to click it to download. You're going to click this RAM fix, download that as well. So you have two files there. I already downloaded them, so I'm not clicking them again. Then you're going to go to this GitHub page for Hikate. Link will also be in the description. You're going to want to get the latest, the latest out of, as of this video, was 5.5.4. You can come down here, you're going to want to click and download the zip file. And once you have those, you're going to want to extract both of your Laka downloads and your Hikate, then you'll be have, you'll have these files after they're extracted. Then once they're extracted you're going to want to open up your main Laka download and you're going to want to drag the contents of it to the root of your SD card. Once that is done, you're going to want to go to your RAM fix, go into that to boot. Then in your locker folder on your SD card, you're also going to want to go into the locker folder. You're going to drag, boot over, replace files in the destination. This fixes an issue potentially with your RAM and the RAM size. Once that's done, you want to go back to the root of your SD card. You want to go to the Hikate. And you're just going to drag and drop the contents of the Hikate download to the root of the SD card. After the Hikate files are copied over, you want to go into Laka, Storage. You want to right click, create a ROM folder. And this is where you're going to put your ROM. So whatever games you're wanting to put on, you're going to move into this folder. If you want to break it down into subfolders, you can put GameCube, N64, whatever it is, and put the ROMs in there. That doesn't matter, but you're going to put them here. So I'm going to take care of that. And once that's done, you can eject your SD card, plug it back into your switch, inject the payload, whether that's through an RCM loader or your PC, 
And then once that's done, I'll meet you back at your switch. Okay, I'm back at the switch. You're gonna need your jig for either method. For, you're gonna either plug to your PC or use your RCM loader, volume, power button. Once we're here, we can remove the jig and the RCM loader. You set your date and time, more configs, locker. All right, welcome to Laka and its RetroArch front end. This is uh, what you'll be greeted with when you first boot into it. So the first thing you really want to do is uh, map your controller out. So you're going to go to the settings, then you're going to go to input. Then you're going to want to go down to the user one binds. You're going to want to change it from RetroPad to RetroPad with analog. Then you're going to want to go down to user one bind all. Select that. Then you're going to present it with each button that it, it wants for you to map. And you're going to press the button in whatever fashion you feel you would like to have your controller mapped out in. Once you're done mapping, you're going to want to go down to user one save auto config. So this saves your config file for this user one mapping. Right, from here, you're going to want to go back to the, the main menu. So go all the way to the left. And then you're going to have some overclock options. If you're going to get into GameCube, the hard to run stuff, you're going to want to overclock the CPU. But disclaimer, overclocking can damage your CPU. If you do it too much or you push it too far, you could damage your CPU and your switch will be shot. So be careful with this. Do it at your own risk. I'm setting mine to maximum performance just for a little bit for demonstration purposes. And then you're going to want to go down to your GPU, which can also be overclocked. The same thing. I'm not going to go at maximum and unstable, but I'm going to go to a handheld boost plus three. Once that's done, you want to head over to the uh, scan directory. And you're going to press scan directory. You're going to select parent directory. You're going to go down to the ROM folder. Now you're going to see a ROMs folder. Now we basically did this one of two ways that you can do it. We did it initially. We made our own ROM folder, put our ROMs in it. Or you can not make that folder plug your SD card in, let it boot up, shut it down, put it back in your computer, the ROMs folder will now appear, and you can add your games then. We just did it the easier way to take the shortcuts. So either way, you click that directory, you'll scan this directory, it will find the games that you have in the directory. Once that's done, you will have the icons of the systems that it detected, and underneath each controller icon will be the games that you have available. From here, you press the game you want, and then you press run. And there you go, we got that. So the home button should have automatically mapped to your quick menu. So you can close the content. And we'll try something a little more demanding, or a lot more demanding, GameCube.
easy money. Are you ready? Here we go. There's definitely some lag. Alright, that is how you get lock on your Switch, how you get games on it, and how you run them. Hopefully this is informative. Hopefully you learned something from it. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments section, or you can reach out on our Reddit page and ask a question there. Stay tuned for a future video where I'm going to be comparing Laka, Android 10, Ubuntu, and Horizon OS to see which one has the best emulation performance. Alright, I hope everybody enjoyed this video, and have a good day everyone.